Rosa Luxemburg. Born on 5th of March 1871 in Zamość, Poland, completed the full course, seven classes, of the Warsaw Grammar School. From 1890, she studied in Zurich at the Faculty of Philosophy, partly natural sciences, partly mathematics. In 1892, she joined the Faculty of Law and has studied public law under Professors Wolf, Vogt, Treichler and Fleiner. Already as a schoolgirl, Rosa had to experience how revolutionary socialists were imprisoned in the nearby citadel of Warsaw, sent to forced labor and hanged. Among them were also young women. Rosa Luxemburg understood, The world must be changed! Like her friends Adolf Warski and Julian Maslewski, she joined a revolutionary circle led by the Rufa Mask in Kaspark, who maintained contacts with socialist circles in Poland and Russia. They rejected individual terror. The group's role model was a mass organization such as German Social Democracy. After about two years of agitation among Warsaw students, Rosa was threatened with arrest. It was probably Marcin Kasprak who helped her escape across the Polish-German border in early 1889, hidden under the straw of a farm wagon. I want to bury in the conscience of the affluent with all the suffering and all the hidden bitter tears. Rosa Luxemburg found the asylum she deserved in Zurich. The university there was the only one in Europe that kept its doors open to female students. In addition, Zurich had a politically interesting and well-stocked library. Half of the women students were Russian. The work, the hard, intensive work that takes up all of one's brain and nerves is the greatest pleasure in life. She has lived for 10 years in different places in Zurich. In her first year, Rosa Luxemburg enrolled the university's Faculty of Philosophy and attended lectures on mathematics, botany and zoology. She retained a lifelong interest in these disciplines. From 1890 onwards, she took courses in political science, economics and history. During her studies in Zurich, Rosa Luxemburg came into contact with leading Polish and Russian Marxists, such as Georg Plekano, Vera Sasulic, Paul Axelrod and many others. Among her fellow students were her friends from Warsaw, such as Julian Maslewski and Adolf Wazowski, as well as the young revolutionary Leo Jogiches, who came from Vilna. Switzerland at that time enjoyed great freedom of opinion, also at the University of Zurich, even though Professor Wolf was a critic of Marxism. We are simply playing sport. I brought the worthy professor up to speed on what was for him a delicate subject, whereupon we proved to him with all the weapons of Marxism that he knew nothing at all about these things. We must do the University of Zurich justice of saying that, regardless of our performances, the faculty did not give either of us any difficulty in obtaining the doctorate. Rosa Luxemburg appeared as a contributor to the Arbeiterstimmung, a journal edited by Robert Seidel in Zurich. Furthermore, she was already writing for Karl Kautsky's Neue Zeit, a weekly journal of German social democracy published in Stuttgart. One of Rosa Luxemburg's first noteworthy speeches was at the Second International Socialist Congress in 1893. Rosa, 23 years old at the time, was quite unknown outside one or two socialist groups in Germany and Poland. Her opponents had a hard time against her. I still see her, how she jumped up from the crowd of delegates and swung on a chair to make herself better heard. Small and looking very frail, in a summer dress which cleverly concealed her physical disability, she represented her cause with such magnetism and such compelling words that the mass of the Congress conquered and charmed, raised their hands for her admission. Comrades, for the first time social democrats from the parts of Poland that are subject to Russian rule are taking part in your Congress. The workers of Warsaw and Wurz sent their delegates from the dark realm of political despotism. Rosa was not only a brilliant speaker, she also impressed with her work at the university. She was proud and happy when her dissertation was printed and sent to her. It looks pretty, doesn't it? I have to admit my heart quivered and I blushed as I was opening the packet. The dissertation can be credited with a full command of the subject matter, great accuracy, great reasoning power. 
it unlocks the subject without ever becoming long-winded and testifies for theoretical talent as well as a practical view. The style is rather poor. The viewpoint, somewhat one-sided. The writer is a socialist and an adherent of the so-called materialist view of history. From time to time, she uses sources from a socialist pamphlet literature. However, that does not detract from the competence of the achievement, which exceeds by far what is demanded of a thesis. I therefore request that it be accepted. In May 1898, Rosa Luxemburg moved to Germany. My ideal is such a social order in which I will be granted to love everyone. In the pursuit of this ideal, and in the name of this ideal, I will perhaps one day be able to hate. All these years in Switzerland have been a source of inspiration for Rosa Luxemburg's political struggle. She often traveled there enjoying the quietness of the Swiss landscape, far from the great ambitions she had to improve society. Every year, this time, I used to make my travel preparations, because I was always at Lake Geneva on 7th or 10th of April. Now, I haven't seen it for three years. What a surprise it is to suddenly find oneself hovering over the big blue surface of the lake after the dull stretch from Brune to Lausanne and after a last terribly long tunnel. Every time my heart flutters like a butterfly. And then the wonderful stretch from Lausanne to Clarence with the tiny stations every 20 minutes. Far down by the water, a cluster of small houses grouped around a white church. The singing exclamation of the conductor. Then, the station bell catches a tinkling still so bright and cheerfully. And the blue water changes its surface towards the railway track. Sometimes slanting upwards, sometimes sloping downwards, and drawing a long train of white foam to close it. On the other side of the river, the wide, ragged mountain face below mostly shrouded in a blue fragrance, so that only the upper parts of the snow float so unreal in the sky. And above it all, the dazzling mighty Don du Midi. God, when will I experience April there again? Rosa Luxemburg will be assassinated on 15th of January 1919 in Berlin. Leo Jugisches, 10th of March 1919 in Berlin.